Hello, for the Easter art box, we are going to be making a Easter bunny, um, or we're going to make the Easter chicken. And they're both got holes in so that they can sit on the nest, which is gonna have uh, Cadbury's mini eggs in. So you'll be able to sit them on there and hide the eggs and have a bit of a reveal. So you'll be getting a box of mini eggs. How exciting. Okay, so um, you'll get your clay in a pouch like this, which will be easier to um, probably just cut the end off. Um, obviously don't use the scissors that are too sharp. Um, you'll be getting your pot of slip, which is your clay glue that we'll be using to stick, stick all the ears on, the nose on and all the little bits. Okay, also you're going to need a ruler and a placemat to work on or some cardboard. Okay, so uh, you might need a little pot of water, um, but you might not. It depends how the clay is behaving if you need to make it a little bit softer. So I've supplied a little cardboard ring, which is going to be the base um, of the little animal that you're going to make to make sure that you get it the right size. Uh, the foil that I've given you, which should be this size, what we're going to do is get this and wrap the foil around it with about five millimetres overlapping the edge. So it's going to look like that. Uh, once you've got that round, then you can overlap around the cardboard ring so that it stays in place. Doesn't have to be too pretty. So, okay, so it's like that at the moment. What you're gonna do then is the other end and we want to make it look like a cone, a bit like a rocket, I suppose. So gently scrunch the top together into a point. So we're just making the inside of our rabbit or our chicken. So you can put your finger inside and just gently squeeze all around. Um, until you think you've got the right shape. So it should be like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be too perfect because it's gonna have clay on. Um, so the next bit we're gonna do is to make a tummy. Because if we just covered that in clay now, he wouldn't look so fun. So he needs to have a little bit of a fat tummy. Um, so I shall um, get the clay out of the bag and then we can go on to the next bit, okay. So we're going to make our chick or bunny body now. Um, but before we do that, actually, we're going to make the nest. So with a pen and your ruler, your nest needs to be six centimetres diameter like this. So with a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper, just mark six centimetres and then turn your paper around or and then do six centimetres the other way so that you've got four marks. And then roughly join them up so that it looks like a circle. Okay. So this is going to be where you, you start your nest. Now, um, you've opened your clay from your bag and we need to rip a piece off. And what is always best is to squidge it into a ball shape. I just find it easier every time I'm going to make something. If you start off with a ball, um, and then it always has a smooth surface. Okay, so give it a roll. 
Okay, so this piece is about a bit smaller than a golf ball. Okay, right, so then we're going to flatten it down onto your piece of cardboard or your paper. Just keep pushing it down with your hand until you get to your six centimeters. That's pretty good. Okay, so it, if you were to peel it off, uh, it measures between five millimeters and eight millimeters. Okay, that's normally what I use, the measurement I use for all the layers of my clay. So between five and eight millimeters thick. So that's your base. The next part is to rip another piece off. And now we're gonna make your sort of snake shape to go around the edge. So you're making it into a long snake shape. So just keep turning it, pinching it and to make it longer. And until you want it to be a usual, as what I've said before, is between five and eight millimeters. Okay, so let's have a quick measure. Yeah, so it's say about eight millimeters diameter. And once you've got it that sort of size, then you can give it a very gentle roll to make it smoother. If you push too hard, it will flatten it out. So just gently rock it backwards and forwards all along the length of it. it's you know no more than one centimeter diameter and you can actually just stretch oh broken a bit well there you go if you if you stretch it too much it will break but hopefully this now is going to be long enough that you can do that with it and so if I break that piece off where it joins I'll just work out that measurement for you. So it's going to be approximately 18 centimeters long. So just lay your snake shape shape. Oh, that is a bit long. So less than 18. Okay, so it like looks like this at the moment. Now I can see this is a bit fat and that's a bit skinny. So I'm gonna take that off and just roll it again until you get the consistent thickness all the way along. If it if it if you get creases, don't worry about it too much because we're gonna we're gonna make this texture on it anyway to look like a nest. Okay, so that's that's okay. Move it around. You might need to break the end off again. And you're trying to make a nice circle shape like that. Okay. And this is where you get your, your tools. Now, should have given you a tool with a this serrated edge. All right, so what we're going to do is scrape 
downwards to get the clay to join together. Do that all round. All the way around the edge. Okay. And then we're going to do the um, inside, which is a little bit more fiddly. You might be able to turn the tool round for a smaller end and you push the clay downwards and then twist your nest round. Keep this hand in the same position. Twist it around so that it all joins up. Okay, like that. Right, and then now we're going to do the texture. So it's a little bit high, I think. So push it down a little bit. Because when we put our eggs in at the end, we don't want the eggs falling off the edge. So it has to have that dip for the eggs to settle into. Um, and now this is the pretty easy, quick bit, is to start doing your texture. And you just go around the edge at an angle to create this sort of straw nest effect. Do that all the way around the edge. So you're twisting your nest and holding your hand with the tool in the same position and just going up and down until it meets. Okay, right, so now we've got this. Uh, do the same for the edge. Hold it in your hand. Um, and you can hold it like this sort of angle and with the tool again not straight down but at an angle and twist the nest around and do this texture effect all the way around the edge Just keep twisting and tapping the edge of the clay. Okay, now some bits are a bit wonky. That's up to you if you want to try and smooth all that out. But a nest is always a bit messy anyway, so you can just leave it like that. Okay, so we're there. And then we just want to do the inside of the nest. Um, so you're just Doing the same effect and just trying to break it all up so that it has a texture on it. Turn it around in your hand. Uh, to get this texture. Alright. So you've done around the edge and then you've got to do the middle. So just start to, again, just turn the nest around. Keep this hand in the same position um, and just tap away with the texture tool. And eventually you'll get it all covered. So it's like that. That's pretty good. Okay, so that's the nest done. Because if we get the nest done and then we know we've got enough clay ready to make your piece. So, move that out of the way. And then you can move on to the body. And as I said, we were going to do the fat tummy first. Um, so, break a piece off. You can keep this under the, your wet flannel um, so it doesn't dry out. Um, so this time we're going to pinch a piece of clay till it's 
between five and eight millimeters thick. I'd say this is probably five actually, five millimeters or less even. So it's quite thin. Um, so you've got a piece like that. You've got your foil cone shape that's hollow. Um, and this isn't really looking like a tummy at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is rip that piece in half so that you've got a longer strip that's gonna go around the middle of his tummy. So this is probably two centimeters high. Try not to squeeze this too much, otherwise you'll collapse it. You can always put your fingers inside and open it up again. So we're gonna put this piece about mm, one and a half centimeters from the bottom. Just lay it on, okay? And then with this other piece, um, I'm just gonna take that piece, that end piece off. And then wrap it around. So now all I need is just another piece there. So just rip another bit of clay off, squeeze and pinch. and then you can join them up now obviously it's a bit rough so put your fingers inside and then gently make your tummy meet up and use your fingers to fill in the gaps okay so it should look like that all the way around. Um, then basically, now we're gonna do the top layer. So same principle, just grab a piece of clay, pinch and squeeze till it's about five millimeters thick, maybe a bit less. Um, and then you can start to put it on. So you can start from the top. If you happen to have a, a pointy piece, you can put that at the top and just lay it over. Grab your next piece of clay, pinch. Um, yeah, try and make one end a bit pointier because then you can join that up there. So now we're gonna straight away start joining that edge up. Okay. And then you should only need one more bit to join up that gap. So pinch to five millimeters, maybe a bit less. So you've got a point, lay that on and then with your fingers, just smooth over until they're joined up. So you should, it should start to look like this. Um, just carry on. And then so you make sure you go over the tummy that you made earlier. So it should start to look like quite a fat cone shape. Um, you can pinch it down to the bottom. And just do the same thing. Lay it over, smooth over your edges. And just turn your clay around so you can see 
what bit fits best. So I'm going to do that. And then you see this bit's quite long. Well, that's fine. Well, I'm going to overlap it now so it goes right inside. So you can overlap your clay into that shape. So just keep getting a piece of clay, flattening it out to five millimetres or less. Um, obviously, I've got a bit of a gap here. So you can just tear your clay to fit in those that space, smooth it in, and then wrap it over, ready to do the inside. So we're nearly there. Okay. Roll it over the edge. Now to do the inside, it's fairly easy. So if you make it into a pointy shape, fairly long pointy shape, then you can try and get it all the way inside. You might want to curl it up a bit or yeah so that bit try and curl it up a bit so you can get it inside poke it in and then you know you've reached right inside there push it down with your fingers and then make sure all the foil is covered you can the clay, the clay is nice and soft, so you can start smoothing things about naturally. So you should really have only one or two bits left to go. So I have this bit here. If your fingers are tiny, then obviously you've got to try and make it long enough that you can poke it right in because you won't necessarily be able to get your fingers all the way in. So a nice long piece like that. Curl it up slightly, poke it in, wiggle it about, and then you can you might be able to get your fingers in. If you can't, then you could always use your tool and get it in there like this piece I'm going to drop that in and with your tool you can just try and get all the foil covered now you don't have to get all the foil covered it's just so that it looks nicer when you look inside your piece it looks like it's finished we don't want too much clay on the lip edge because otherwise we're never going to get our chocolate eggs inside. So, okay. So this is kind of it at the moment. And now it's time to tidy it all up. So just spend probably five or ten minutes taking bits of clay off. Um, making sure the foil's covered. and smoothing it all with your fingers. I mean, the clay is soft enough. It's really easy to move about. If your cl clay is a bit harder, uh, use your tool. But I think your fingers are the best. Okay, so. What I'm going to do now is now I've tidied up that edge is to, with a smooth tool, without the jagged edge, is to start taking bits off to try and smooth out the body. 
So twist it around in your hand and start to scrape. I mean, I tend to scrape it and wipe it on my finger just because then it's a bit quicker. But So move it around in your hand and scrape the clay because you're trying to make it all nice and smooth. Uh, ready to put on either the ears and the nose and the uh, little hands for the rabbit and the tail um, and then for the chicken uh, we'll put on the beak and the frill which is the top bit on his head uh, or the waddle which is the flappy bits under his beak and his wings okay so you're just moving that around gradually scraping away the clay until it's the shape you want. I mean, I've got a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to just fill that in with the clay and move it around. So we keep doing this. All the way around. Filling it in where there's any little holes. Keep turning your tool backwards and forwards. So it's a bit like ice, icing a cake. Just trying to make it gradually get it all nice and smooth. Okay, so it's getting better, but it does take a little bit of time. If you get too much on your tool, just wipe it off. And then you've always got your little bit there on your thumb to fill in the gaps if you need it. So up and down, all the way around until You've got your cone shape, but he's got a bit of a fat tummy, so it's starting to look a bit more like a pear shape or an avocado. Um, okay, so we're getting there. That's more or less there. So the inside, again, just try and make sure that it's the same thickness all the way around. It just helps for drying and when it's drying, if it's different thicknesses, then you, you might end up with cracks. That's completely normal. It's air dry clay um, and that's what happens. Uh, different temperatures affect it. Um, Obviously, it's got foil inside it, so that's going to affect it as well. Um, but we're going to try and make this bottom area flat. So that when it stands up, it's going to be level. Now, so if you put it on there, you can see it's like a pear shape or an avocado. Um, and you turn it all around and then you can start to see where the lumps and bumps are and if it's straight you know just move it around and we've we've scraped a lot of the clay off now um, so you can start to scrape it and move it around with your well I like to use my thumb um, all the way around until you've got your smooth shape. So again, yeah, twist it, and now I'm dragging my finger down. Okay. 
so that's the top area is looking okay now it's just this bottom area see there's lumpy bumpy bits so grab a bit of clay on your tool and smooth that in there's another bit there smooth it in so actually I'm just going to go around with the tool and lightly go up and down smoothing your clay out it's obviously not a very quick process but it needs to have a smooth surface for it to look nice at the end okay start to go around with your finger um, if it starts to get really if the clay starts to get too hard to move around you can always dip your finger in a bit of water um, the only problem with using too much water is it ends up quite slimy and then it's it's sticky and then the clay is more difficult to control so I mean, this is this is starting to go harder, harder now because the air's got to it. So, use your fingers and your thumbs. Just keep turning it around in your hand to get it smooth. Uh, and then the next part will be making the other little pieces. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. You can carry on for a little bit longer, making it as perfect as you want it to be. Um, and then the next stage will be moving on to either making the uh, ears, nose, little hands and the bunny tail. Um, so this one's dried. And as you can see, it's dried with a crack. That's, as I said, it's not completely normal for that to happen sometimes. So with your slip that I've supplied you, you can dip your finger in it, fill in the gap. Um, and that, that's, you know, it's like clay glue. So that's that's the rabbit. And the chicken will be making the waddle, the beak, the frill and his wings. His wings are is just it's just a circle and cut in half. Okay, so um, stop there and then we'll um, go on to making the next pieces. So we're going to make the bunny parts now. So you have your body shape that you're happy with. So what you're going to do now is twist it around and decide which is the best side because it's not going to be perfect all the way around um, and then it, if you found your best side keep that at the front what we'll do first is make the ears um, what we're going to do though is to make the hole in the top for the ears to sit, in, sit into um, it's just a bit easier for positional and also if you just stick them on now when they dry out they may just fall off so this is just making sure that um, it's going to stay on. So with one of your tools, um, you can just make a gap in the top. Uh, obviously, you'll start to feel the foil underneath if you haven't got much clay. Like mine's a little bit thin, actually. So just make a little dent as best you can. You can always add on a little bit more clay around the edge. So uh, then you can add a little bit of slip, which is your clay glue, into that hole. Ready for when we add the ears. <clears throat> okay, so 
break up a bit of clay and we're going to um, okay what sort of size is it and I say I'm gonna make as I always do make a little ball first so it's about the size of a Malteser okay so put it in your palm and roll it around until it's got a fairly smooth surface. Pinch it until it looks like a nice smooth Malteser. And you'll need to do that twice because you've got two ears and we want them to be the same size. Okay, do the same again. And if they're not quite the same, obviously break a bit of clay off. Um, of the big one and then try and make them the same size okay so with one of them pinch pinch and turn until it becomes a long cylinder shape and this is about right okay so that measures between three and four centimeters long then you want to make the groove for the ear in here. So with one of your tools um, that's got um, a shape in it, you can push on the length of the ear, push it down until you get that groove and you can pinch around it a little bit as well. Okay. And gently twist the tool to get it off. So you've got this shape. Okay, do the same with the other ball of clay. Pinch and twist until it gets to three or four centimetres long. Get your tool and push down to make the groove for the ear. Okay, so gently rotate it and pull it out so now we've got two ears that hopefully look the same so we could put them that way around or you could put them that way well, I think they're better that way okay so now we've got to try and get it in those holes they're a little bit big at the moment so what I'm gonna do is squeeze that end that end into more of a point okay then we're going to get some slip place it on the end of the ear and just poke it a little bit to make the rough edge and that just helps to stick the glue stick the clay together and you can roughen up the top of your body as well um, the rougher it is because there's fibres inside the clay and it helps the fibres stick together. So push down and wiggle into place. Same with this one, a bit of slip. Just scratch it a little bit and put it next to the ear. Push and wiggle it around. I mean, you're trying to get the air out if there's any air bubbles in there. If you push them both down together, then it means there's a no, it'll be a nice snug fit. Um, and then when you're happy, then you can get a tool and start to smooth out the slip so that it looks like a nice join. Um, and then the back as well. Just smooth the clay around. The edges of the ears. Use the tool and then use your fingers just to clear it all up. So you've got your ears, you might want to just affect them a little bit. You can do a, bo a point, you know, you could do one drooping or having them both sticking up like that. 
I think that's fine. Right, so now you know where your face is going to be, right down the middle of those ears. Um, so I'm going to get a small piece of clay that's going to be the cute little nose. Um, so you want to make it quite small and roll it in your palm. Okay, I think that's about right. And that measures just about five millimetres in diameter. And this is where you've got to try and imagine a line coming down from the middle of the ears down to about there, which is about 15 millimetres down, I would guess. Make a little mark. Decide if you're happy where that nose is going to be. Just scratch it around that area. A little bit of slip. And same with your nose. Just poke it and scratch it a little bit. Poke it in there. And then you can smooth all the slip away. Okay. So we have a nose. Then we're going to put the eyes in. So it's between the ear and the nose to the left over there. And just push and twist till you get a decent size hole. And then the tricky bit is trying to guess where it's going to be on the other side. So gently position the eye, twist. Okay, like that. So that's fine for the eyes. Uh, now we can do the little paws. They're similar to the nose, slightly bigger. Um, roll it first till you've got a ball. Uh, roll it a little bit so that it becomes more of a cylinder shape. And then to make the cute little paw shapes you can just make two little marks. Okay. Make another one the same size. Roll it in on your finger. Make it into a slight cylinder shape. Do two marks for the paws. Okay, so we've got all paws ready and we've got to decide where to put them and the position. So halfway down the body, uh, you can go underneath the eyes and make a bit of a mark there and a mark there, make some holes, a bit of slip so that they don't, so that they stick nicely. Um, on the back of your paw, scratch with a little bit of slip on it as well. And then you can position it onto your rabbit. Just push down slightly and do the same for the other one. with a bit of wet clay and there you've got your two paws on and then just clean up the slip I mean it's a bit wet and messy at the moment so once it starts to dry a bit then you can start to clean it up so we have the front of the rabbit done and then when you turn this around he's got his little tail at the back so oh I haven't done the mouth. Okay, let's do the mouth. So with your pointy mouth tool, um, I normally put my finger just to balance so I can be more accurate with where I'm going to put it. Just underneath the nose, 
do a little semicircle where his mouth's going to be. And you'll be removing a small piece of clay. So it looks like that. Okay. If you muck it up, just squish it with your finger and start again. Don't worry too much. Or you could just do a little hole. Okay. Turn your rabbit around. And we're going to do the bunny tail. So it's a bit bigger, a slightly bigger blob. Roll it in your palm of your hand. And this again is where you draw your imaginary line down the middle of your ears so that you get right in the middle and then near the base you're going to start stabbing away to make it rough make the clay rough a little bit of slip there as your glue same with the tail scratch and slip and then push onto your rabbit okay so that's all done now you can just leave him to dry on a bit of cardboard or on your mat for a couple of days. I mean, at the moment it's winter here, so it might even be two, three days. If you want to speed up the process, you can put them in the oven on some grease proof paper on a baking tray on the very lowest setting of your oven and uh, have a look after half an hour and see what you think. It should t start to turn light grey all over. Um, but obviously you need adult supervision for this. Um, or if you want a break from this, just leave him on the side for a couple of days. Um, if you get the cracks, which I spoke about before, uh, you can get a bit of your wet slip and, and, and just apply it with your tool or with your finger and just fill, fill in the gaps. That's the best thing to do. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, it, you can just paint straight over that now. As long as it's not shiny wet, you know, this slip dries really quickly. So, um, you know, he's ready to paint. The other thing you can do is um, you can, if there's any uneven bits you're not happy with, you can just put a bit of sandpaper on, um, sand it down to a really smooth surface if you want to. Okay, so there we are for our rabbit. On to the painting. So we have our bunny and our nest. It's all nice and dry. I've gone ahead and painted one coat of white on already. And um, so we're just going to do another layer. So this is your sponge paintbrush to get the colour on nice and quickly. So if you hold him near the top of his head and then just work on the bottom bit first and work your way all the way around. Um, and then paint the nest as well. And I shall just speed up the video to get this painted quickly. If any of your parts have fallen off while you're painting it, like the ears, um, you can always glue them back on with the slip. So um, just put some slip in the hole and then push the ears back on. Um, and then, but you have to wait for them to dry. Um, Okay, let's move on to the next part. So we've done two coats of white on the bunny and now with your little paintbrush we're going to paint the inside of his ears okay with the light pink. So if you can get it done in just one stroke that would look quite nice. I might need a little bit more. Okay. Mm. 
Alright, then we're going to paint the little nose. It's got a cute pink nose. Um, okay, then we'll have to wash your brush out. And uh, we're going to use the black uh, just to touch in his eyes. So wash your brush and then wipe it on some kitchen towel or some tissue. And you need to... wipe your brush keep wiping it turn it around until you get a nice fine point okay because it's that point that we need to make onto the eyes um and then just simple dot into the hole that we made as a positional um then with the mouth Again, with the very tip of your brush, bring it down to the middle, and then from the other side to make the little smile. Okay. Uh, then we can go on to doing the dots. Um, so the purple dots. Uh, there should be a little stick that I put in with the kit. So we're going to do purple spots all over so that he looks like an Easter bunny. He looks like a bit like an Easter egg. So let's start with one under his chin. And the good thing about the stick is it will make a nice, a fairly round shape. And um, we're trying to. So you'll get a couple of, I need to dab it in the paint every other one, probably. Um, so it's going to look like a polka dot rabbit. So keep moving around. Doing the dots. And you go back to the front again. So I want another one there and another one there. So dip in the paint, do a couple of dots and then dip it again. I might do one on his hand, just off centre. And then another one under there. Alright, so now we've done the front part. What I want to do really is continue the other side. So dip and spot. So we want the front to look the best. Okay. So I'm happy with that now. Um, we can do his ears. Well, actually, we'll leave the ears for now because that's what we're holding on to and we don't want to smudge the spots. So once you've done the front, then we can go ahead and do the back. Um, so you can continue with that. And with the nest, um, we're just going to do the same thing. So I don't think it really matters where you start, but try and make the spots 
same distance apart that you did on the rabbit. If you make any mistakes, don't try and get them off now. Um, the thing about acrylic paint is that you can just, once it's dry, it doesn't take too long. Maybe it takes five or ten minutes for it to dry and then just paint over it again. So don't worry too much at this stage. might be able to just about get around all of the nest hopefully without smudging anything and if I do don't worry about it we can we can always rectify things so I've tried lots of different color ways with this one and this is what I ended up liking the most was just white with purple dots anyway so you could always um actually what i think i might do is with the black paintbrush if you get that again and then on his paws i don't know if you remember we made some little marks and i think that might help to make his paws stand out a bit better so you want to do three little marks just where his paws are. Okay, like that. And he's pretty much good to go. Um, and once you could, if you've paint, you could paint the inside um, white so that when we're getting our Cadbury's eggs, our mini eggs, we can fill the rabbit up and then put him on the nest and then you can reveal your eggs. So there will be a photo of that shortly. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and happy Easter everyone.